Michał Janek, Małe Piwo TV. Dzisiaj kontynuujemy naszą podróż po e, ber, browarach e, belgijskich. Zostajemy jeszcze w Brukseli i browar de la Seine. E, mam, I have uh, appreciate the meeting with you. It's Bernard uh, Lebus, Lebuk, sorry. Lebuk, I'm sorry. So the, the brewer of the brewery de la Seine that you can see in the back of us. Uh, Bernard, if you would met somebody, for example, a Polish guy or Polish girl that have nothing else, to do with Brasserie de la Seine, never heard. And you need to explain, describe your brewery in five words, which would be? Uh, if I would met a Polish girl uh, <laughs> in five words, maybe, uh, would you like to have a beer with me? <laughs> And to describe your brewery in five words? Uh, it's just uh, the beer, the people, mm -hmm. the philosophy, Um, I think three words are enough. It's fair, it's fair enough. You have the the home brewer experience, uh, and then you start to brew outside in, in the bigger scale. How im you think important is the home brewer experience in brewing at the bigger scale? Um, th there are many reasons for why uh, home brewing uh, is important. Uh, First, not for being a brewer, but uh, for being a client, uh, a consumer, mm -hmm. it is important to, to brew yourself, to understand uh, deeper what you are going to drink when it's not uh, made by yourself. I mean, if you go to a bar, you drink a beer, and you have brewed beer yourself, you know better about the product, so you became someone intelligent. So first, for the consumer, Uh, it's very important to be a home brewer. Mm -hmm. uh, then, um, I think uh, for, for myself, it's just uh, it's an experience, a proudness maybe, uh, because I start from zero, really from zero. Uh, no, we own the the biggest brewery in, in, in our region, in, in Brussels, uh, which is quite funny because uh, we, Yvon, my uh, partner and I, we were just home brewers and now we are the biggest brewery of Brussels, so it's kind of funny. Uh, that's what it brings to me. Mm -hmm. um, you, I mean, on, on your labels, on the names of the beers, you everywhere underlines the Brussels, the Bar Brussels dialect, and why Brussels is so much underlined. Why Brussels? Because Brussels is our city, it is our terroir. Uh, we were born in Brussels, we live in Brussels, so it's kind of logical to make someone uh, so something with Brussels. Um, usually, usually people are not proud to, uh, to be from Brussels, and if they create something which has to do with food or with uh, beverage, with beer, uh, they don't like the image of the city, but we love that image of the city. Uh, we think that uh, city is very uh, dense, it's full of people, full of interesting people, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where we live. Mm. You mentioned about these three words, how to describe your brewery, also philosophy. You brew different kind of beers, different styles, quite you know, differ from each other. What is the philosophy that stands behind your, you as a brewer, your beers? I think there is only one philosophy, uh, I mean for creating beers. Uh, we brew the beer that we want to drink we brew for ourselves and then we hope that the public will follow us and as far they are following so so it's good and how about because uh, with the beer revolution sometimes you have to like not it's not maybe to force too much people but a bit learn them okay drink a bit more bitter beer or drink a bit more sour beer uh, do you also feel that you have to a bit educate people that are drink only, I don't know, Stella or Jupiler and a certain moment, yeah, just drink Zine beer. It's a bit more bitter, but it's, fa it's great beer, so. I don't like the word uh, education mm -hmm. because I'm not a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a brewer. Uh, so I brew beer that, as I said, that I like to, to drink and I can explain to the people mm -hmm. why this beer is good, why is it better maybe than other beers and then if uh, I explain with passion and 
with uh, with a good beer of course because the product has to be uh, enjoyable uh, then people will understand and uh, follow your opinion but I don't have to teach them maybe mm -hmm. to uh, show them the way All right um, there is a f your I think it was second beer or third beer Taras Bulba there is a s uh, small Polish hint that stands behind uh, the beer. You have the, the the father wants to kill his son. No? Yes, it's a very uh, dramatic and uh, complicated story. Uh, you know, Teres Bulba uh, was a Cusack. Uh, he was supposed to live in the 17th century. Uh, he was a leader of the Cusack army, uh, which was fighting for Russia against Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, you had, it, it was a religion war between uh, the Catholic Poland and Orthodox mm -hmm. uh, Russia. And uh, the son of Taras Bulba, so the son of the leader of the army, uh, married a girl from the opposite side. Uh, he married a, a princess from Poland. And to save the honor of his country, uh, Taras Bulba murdered his son. And you know, in Belgium, we have also kind of wars between community. Mm -hmm. So uh, we wanted to mock uh, uh, those wars, to mock those fights, to mock people hating each other. And uh, we, uh, we uh, reinvented, uh, we revisited mm -hmm. the story of Taras Bulba and we uh, transposed it to, uh, to the story of Belgium. Uh, it's kind of funny. It's a kind of, in in Brussels dialect uh, that kind of joke. You call it zwans. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to be uh, accepted by uh, uh, Brussels people, you have to know how to zwans. So it's like dark humor, no? It's like, is, is that? It's not. It's not it's dark not humor. It's a little bit uh, nonsense humor. This way, uh, I know because we talked that you don't know the Polish beers, but something that it's connected with Poland, I would like to ask you: it's the open letter that you wrote and you signed a few months ago. It was against this uh, contract, fake breweries. There was also like discussion in Poland about this letter. Um, could you say something more about that? Since uh, yeah, a lot of Polish breweries, also contract breweries, just to to be to, at the start, just to earn enough money to perhaps have in future their own breweries, and they are a huge part of beer revolution. Uh, and then you sign the contract as a real brewer, let's say, against how we can uh, more understand this letter from the Polish point of view. You are speaking about beer revolution, mm -hmm. but I don't think that there is a beer revolution. Uh, there is a beer market which is uh, evoluting mm -hmm. uh, thanks to people like like us, like uh, the rank, uh, people who are pioneers uh, making beer, mm -hmm. who create things. And those fake brewers, uh, they're they don't do the part of their job. They are just following us because there is money to do. Mm -hmm. So actually, they are money makers. They are not brewers. They are mocking the profession mm -hmm. and uh, they are mocking their public because they let the public think that they are creating something, that they are creating beer, but they are not creating anything. They are uh, repeating a story that they didn't invent it for making money. Okay, that, that's that's more clear. You said there is no revolution, and actually that's also my impression that the beer revolution that's happening in Italy, in the States, and in the Poland, in the Belgium is much more slower. Yes, um, we quite. we have a problem in Belgium is that Be Belgian people uh, is too proud of uh, what they produced in the past. Uh, when we speak about beer, actually, I think we are living in the past. Uh, United States is not living in the past anymore. Italy, not anymore. Uh, people are uh, waking up in Eastern Europe. But in Belgium, we think we are the best and we're going to die <laughs> being the best. And do you feel uh, that De La Seine and other breweries are the representation of this new wave of Belgium and the representation of the Belgium in the beer revolution? Do you feel yourself as that? Yes, certainly. Uh, we are not the only one. Um, you have a lot of uh, creative uh, young people or 
less young people. Uh, I told uh, I told you about Durank. Mm -hmm. uh, I could also told you about Rull, mm -hmm. who was the first in Belgium to um, to put some American hops in in the beers. I could uh, speak about you about Tilquin, mm -hmm. uh, who create new types of, um, of, of, of blending of uh, fruit beers. Um, and we also are pioneers and uh, we, are, we have made the, 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 uh, our part of the job. Um, for example, uh, uh, we mentioned Taras Bulba. Uh, before Taras Bulba, there were no sp special beer with uh, a solo alcohol degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, we created it and now we have a lot of followers. The thing is that um, we are still waiting for younger people to create something. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm now 40 years old and I don't see any people of 30 years old opening a new brewery and creating things. And that preoccupies me. Mm. Okay, and well, that's actually a good move to my last question. What is the future of the La Seine Brewery? What's, maybe you can sell already some plans to, to us? What's already, what do you want to do with your beers, with your breweries, new projects? Uh, the, the future is tomorrow. We have to uh, expand the brewery because uh, it's getting too small. Um, of course, uh, the philosophy will remain the same. It's very important uh, to say. And, uh, but now we have, we have no choice. We cannot follow the, the demand. So um, probably uh, in 2016, uh, you would not recognize anything here because uh, we will have changed. Okay. That's actually the, it's a common thing between the Brussels be breweries, you and the Cantillon. There's always two less beers from your breweries. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Uh, I will not um, uh, be angry with that. It's a good situation for us. Uh, Bernard, uh, thank you very much for the interview. You're um, tyle na dzisiaj uh, z Bavaru de la Seine. Czekajcie na kolejne wywiady z latającą kamerą i światłem. Michał Janek, Małe Piwo TV. Uh, do następnego.